there's a, there's a difference in personality between a fighter pilot and a real. And um, it's I, I, I enjoy being a real for one of the reasons that I get to fly with different pilots. When you get a fighter pilot in a cockpit of an airplane, you you find a uh, uh, person there that's just you never see anywhere else. You'd never see him in the ready room or anywhere else. And that person, uh, who, no matter who he is, whether he's the worst fighter pilot in the squadron, you, you know he is, or whether he's the best fighter pilot in the squadron, you know he is. When he's in the airplane, he is always the best fighter pilot in the squadron. It's been my experience that he will never, ever admit to himself, which is very important, he will, he will have has a very hard time admitting to himself that somebody else in the squadron beat him. He holds people in contempt. I think the, the general nature of a fighter pilot, or a pilot in general, but in particular a fighter pilot, is, is competition, is a competitive nature. You have to be competitive to survive. You have to be competitive to, to do well, to, to be professional, or to be, to be good at what you do. And to me, that's, that's the whole key. Uh, I am very, very competitive in nature. Uh, I don't like to lose. I like to win all the time. Uh, so I, I kind of push myself all the time to win, to be competitive. To be perfectly honest, I think there's three of us in the squadron that are equals could go out on any one day and fight each other and come back just depending on the circumstances. Any one of us could come out on top. I consider myself to be in that top three. In this squadron here, I, I, I personally feel there are only a few people who are really competitive and really good fighter pilots. And Lone Star happens to be one of them. And we've, we have kind of a uh, personal thing together when we, when we go out and fight one another because we both feel that we're fairly good at what we do. We're both fairly professional and uh, take take what we do fairly seriously. There's always that competition. You're always trying to be the best, whether it be landing on the carrier or shooting the missiles or going out and fighting your airplane against the other guy. You never want to be second best. You're always trying to be number one. Most engagements, most aerial engagements are very, very short. Uh, in fact, less than 60 seconds. Uh, anything that runs over 60 seconds, now you're, you're st the odds are starting to actually fall against you. So most engagements are very, very quick. Old well, practice setting a guy up behind us and trying to, trying to sucker him into making a move from which he can't recover at the same time while we're, we're working to get behind him. There's several different ways of doing that. One would be to, to get the guy to commit his nose down at the same time that you're slowing down and pulling your nose up. If he gets his nose buried like that, he can't get it up in time, and he'll shoot out in front of you, and you just roll in behind and shoot him. There's a guns on the F-14. Okay, I got him locked. He's going 20 right at four miles. The idea is is to not get shot. That's the primary goal in, in, a, in a defensive fight, is to keep the other guy from shooting you. And the way you do that is to keep his nose off of you, whatever it is. It's a very violent type of flight. You're looking over your shoulder all the time, flying the airplane, you know, and looking over your shoulder. He still makes a, a couple of mistakes, and he has made a couple of mistakes with me and allowed me to get the advantage over him. But so far, uh, he's not been able to get the advantage over me. Tell me how his nose isn't on me, but I'm in deep trouble here. Although only the pilot can physically control the plane, when engaged in close okay, and the sky is full of bogeys, the pilot doesn't complain. There are two sets of eyes looking out the window instead of one. And he knows that no matter how tough it gets, the Rio is always right behind him. I had to explain what a Rio was to my mom for about four years before she understood it. In this particular airplane on the F-14, as in the, as in the uh, Phantom, which I flew for six years before this, uh, you basically operate all the weapon systems on board. In this airplane, we do the radio communications, although the pilot can certainly do that. And we're basically in charge of the navigation, electronic warfare systems. But uh, even that doesn't really describe it. It's really a two-man crew. I think a good way of describing a competition you're looking for, like between me and Russ, as flying with Rios, is, would be a lot like, <laughs> this is going to sound funny, would be a lot like flying with Rios, flying with a lot of different Rios, it's like flying with a lot of, or sleeping with a lot of different women. They all, re, they all rate your performance and they all talk among each other, you know? <laughs> so there's the competition right there that, you know, you want to be the best lover this girl ever had, and you also want to be the best pilot this Rio ever had. I think everybody has their own idea of who the best pilot in the squadron would be, or the best handful of pilots. I don't think we verbalize that too much, uh, but I'll bet if you were to get secret ballots from everybody, I, I bet you would come up with the same two or three names as who they thought the best pilot or the best NFO was. You can't help but have a subliminal type pecking order that people kind of acknowledge. We train on a, on a day.